You ever served on jury duty? I have several times, especially when I was living in Boston, when I was living in Alston and Brighton, which means Norfolk and Suffolk County, because they're both annexes of Boston. I got selected for jury duty several times, and a few times when I was living in Topeka as well, I got called on. I always get stuck with jury duty. Uh, fortunately, since moving to Illinois, I have not, but I've been on jury duty plenty of times, and I've come to the conclusion that if I ever get in that much trouble, if I'm ever in so much trouble that I need to be in front of a jury of my peers, I do not want to be in front of a jury of my peers, because I don't think the system works very well. I mean, number one, they're not really your peers, are they? Uh, you think about what a peer group actually is, a group of people that identify with you somehow. For example, if you're a musician and you, all the people you hang around with are other types of musicians, those are your peers. That's your core group. These are the people that you identify with the most and who identify with you the most. Random people from all over the place who don't want to be there are not your peers. They are not your peers. They do not understand you. They're not going to connect with you. So how can they make a sound decision? Number two. People on the jury do not understand what the judge or the attorneys are talking about most of the time. Oh, God forbid, especially if it's a, a medical trial. You have no idea what they're talking about, and I'm guilty of this too. Neither do you want to know. <laughs> you don't want to know. You don't ask. You act like you understand. And everybody in the jury box acts like they understand, and they don't. They don't know what the hell anybody's talking about, like I said, especially in a medical trial. And that's, again, that ties in with the jury of your peers, because if the trial, if people who were sitting in the jury in a medical trial were all nurses and doctors, they'd know what the hell the judge and attorney were talking about. But aside from not understanding the subject matter, you don't understand the legalese anyways, because we're not attorneys. All an attorney really is, is someone who translates the legalese back and forth between the judge. But the people... In the jury and the people that are on trial the on the prosecution side and on the defendant side have no idea what the hell they're talking about under normal circumstances they really don't I mean, it can be explained and explained and explained but just listening to it you don't know what the hell they're talking about number three and again this ties in with it people make decisions based on feelings rather than facts they make emotional decisions, which is why a lot of times attorneys try to play up to people's emotions rather than sticking to the facts. If you can stick to the facts, you can make a logical decision, but people don't think logically a lot of the time. They think with their emotions. So they'll make an emotional decision and it could really be the wrong one, which I'm going to give you an example of a trial here in a minute and you'll see what I'm talking about. People also tend to make snap judgments based on how people look, how they sound, how they smell. You know, somebody came to court and he wasn't wearing a suit, may not have one. Maybe he can't afford a suit. Maybe he's homeless. You don't know, okay? You really don't. But you're going to look at that person and be like, yeah, I know that type. And we all do that too. I do it. I, I admit it. I, I've done that. Where, you know, you, sometimes you see somebody and you're like, yeah, <laughs> something's wrong with that guy. Or what's up with that woman? But if you're sitting there and you're in a position to make a decision about their life and have that kind of power, you're going to screw that person over uh, almost every time, I think. I've seen it. I've seen examples of that where people are just like, yeah. Um, and number five, people aren't really paying attention <laughs> because they don't want to be there. How do you get on jury duty? They force you. If you don't go, you're penalized, right? You don't want to be there. I didn't ever want to serve on uh, jury duty, and neither did anyone else that I was ever on jury duty with. All they wanted to know is, when the hell is this going to end so I can get out of here? I don't want to be here. And they don't really pay attention. They don't know what the hell's going on. So when you have to go back and deliberate, they're clueless. They're clueless about what's been going on in the trial. So if they don't want to be there and they're not paying attention, again, they're not going to make a sound decision. And this is people's lives that you're toying with. 
Now, my example was one that I served in Boston. Hold on. Happy, because somebody's got to be, right? When I was serving on a, a jury in Boston, it was a lo the longest one I served on, because this was a week. Six days. Five business days, and then back on Monday, because it started the previous Monday, and then we came back, and it was six hours every day that we sat in the jury box, pretty much. And then the last day, that Monday, was like two hours. So it was a week. And the trial was there were three kids, okay, teenagers, I guess you could call them. They were college students. So they were like around 19 or 20. I guess that still counts as a teenager, theoretically. But they were, in, they were 19, 20 years old. One of them was taking a bar to court because he had been in the bar drinking, right? They were all there drinking. And then they left and he drove home and he got smashed up real bad in an accident. He got really hurt. So they're trying to sue the bar, okay, for, for damages. Now, outcome, if the bar loses, right? People are going to lose their jobs. The people are going to lose their licenses. It's going to affect a lot of people's lives. So we get to deliberation. And the attitude of everybody is like, yeah, bar can afford it. The insurance will cover it. Just uh, just vote in favor of, uh, of the kid and let him get his money and who gives a shit. And I'm like, Have any, has, who's been paying attention to this? Because I've done this before. Who's been paying attention to this? I felt like the guy in 12 Angry Men. Who was that? Jack Lemmon? Great film. You should watch it. To get it, really get a feel of what I'm talking about, you should watch uh, 12 Angry Men. Who was paying attention? Let me ask you a question. Okay? And I turned into the asshole. Because everybody's like, oh, here we go. Because they wanted to leave. So did I. But I, I wanted to do this right if I was going to do it at all. If you're going to force me to do it, I may as well do it right. How many friends was he in the bar with? Anybody? Because this came up every day. He came there with two other people. Two other guys from his dorm. From his college dorm. He was going to Boston College. Nobody could answer the question. Nobody knew. I was like two. There were three of them all together. It was trial for one, but there were three of them. Hell, both of them were in the jury box. Don't you remember? Nobody, nobody could remember this, but you're going to make a decision here. My point, okay? All three of them had gotten fake IDs. They tracked down a guy because, and this was a lot easier in the 90s because this is when this took place. People used to go around with a laminating machine, a professional laminating machine in their car to these colleges, okay? And they would grind you off an ID because the IDs then were not like they are now. For those of you who are old enough, you know what I'm talking about. They used to be this, it's just a laminated piece of paper for your driver's license and they could make you older real easy. They didn't even have to give you a fake identity. They just changed the birth date. So all three of them admitted to this, that they had gotten, they spent 200 bucks a piece to get a fake ID so they could hit the bars. And they had been doing this. So he's trying to sue the bar saying, oh, you let an underage person drink. And then he went out and had an accident, right? But he misled the bar deliberately. They went in there with the intention of illegally misrepresenting themselves to get alcohol. They broke the law first. Then, because it backfired on them, they want to sue the bar. And the bartenders are going to lose their jobs. And pretty much everybody there is going to lose their jobs because there is a big mess when something like that happens. They, the bar could lose its package license. Uh, there could be all kinds of repercussions for this that nobody's really thinking about because they want to go home. And, you know, the light bulb kind of came on. At least I hope it did because it could be that everybody changed their mind because they figured I was going to be a pain in the ass and they just wanted to go home. I bet you that could be it. But um, ultimately, they changed their mind. Uh, suddenly, everybody's like, yeah, that's right. I think I think he did say that. I didn't think about that. Okay, so w w vote against the kid. And it was that easy. It was that easy to sway the whole jury. 
and that should be number six. People can't make up their minds for themselves. <laughs> you can sway a group of people's opinions so easy. It's kind of like uh, if you saw the movie, um, what was it, Men in Black with uh, Will Smith and Tommy Lee Jones, the original Men in Black, and Tommy Lee Jones is explaining to Will Smith's character about the aliens, and he says, why don't you just tell people? I mean, I get it. And he says, yeah, you get it because you're one person. One person is smart. A group of people is stupid. I'm paraphrasing, but you get the idea. <laughs> so, God, if I was ever um, facing a trial and there was a jury, I would be terrified of that jury. I really would. But, I mean, that that's my five basic reasons why I think that jury doesn't work and that there ought to be a professional jury whose job it is to sit there and deliberate. And I've heard attorneys argue against this, that like, oh, if you did that, then they would have, they would develop biased opinions. Like judges and attorneys and people in general don't already have biased opinions. <laughs> Putting their foot in the door. Everybody's got a biased opinion about something. You can't tell me that they don't. But at least if it was a professional jury, they'd want to be there. So it would eliminate at least one of those problems. Anyways... <laughs> If you have uh, any other reasons why you think a jury duty is or is not a good idea, go ahead and post it down below. I'd love to see it.